<laughs> All right. Yeah. Do you see where we are? I do. We are literally surrounded by boxes. We're in giant boxes. This is our life right now. It is. This is the story of Gateway in 2020 in some ways. And 2019. <laughs> and, uh, and 2021. Yeah. yeah. So um, you're, what you're looking at is our new office, which is indeed in a box. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's what's going on. If you are wondering, we are officially moving offices. That's right. Which means uh, Monday and Tuesday, um, the offices will be... Um, in and out of phone and um, internet. So as that stuff transfers from the, the Burgess location to the new location, uh, which we will announce where we, where we are um, soon, uh, but uh, we want to get everything set up first. We're not too terribly far from here, but um, just give us a couple days. Uh, if you need us for anything for emergency purposes, Jump on the Alexio app and uh, call us on our cell phones. Yeah. And we can uh, help you out. Yeah. Um, now, the fun part is, is you guys are actually not going to be able to tell that we are in a new office when we stream our worship on Sunday morning. Right. Um, we could have kept this a secret from y'all, mm -hmm. but we chose not to. <laughs> uh, is there a room in that box for one more? There's Come not. Come in. Oh, okay. No wait. <laughs> Oh, well, you're like it's Squidward. no fun if there's just two of us. You're Squidward. All right, so what do we got? We've got a couple. Hey, it looks like uh, Rita, uh, Poppy's Rita Williams, she's moving too. Just locally still? David Chandler, good morning, Gateway. And there is Karen Akers and Robert. Good morning, guys. Good to see y'all. Um, oh, they're flowing in now. Yep, there's Bessie. Good morning, Bessie. Sandra, hello. And then that's Jack, Sabella, and Sandra. That's hey, all of y'all. Hey, Gail, praying for you. Love you guys. There is a... Uh, so, good morning from Kara. Carrie, Carrie Mom, Z. Dad, and Carolyn. Um, we're, we're moving, Jared. That's what we're... we're no, we're, we're constantly we're, moving. Ah, man. Let you me don't tell have to tell me that. So, um, let's see. What else, what else do we have going on? Uh, we have something going on tonight. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so, if you guys didn't know uh, the student ministry is doing a back to school or actually multiple back to school prayer groups because Pensacola and its schools there is like a billion of them and they're all yeah. over the place and so to do just one group that would literally take all day long mm -hmm. and so what we're doing is we're splitting up into three different groups Greg Folk is heading up our Pace Milton group uh, Jennifer Mallory is taking care of our Navarre and Gulf Breeze group. Then I'm going to be covering Pensacola and Cantonment. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to be going across to the schools that people have sent in that we have students at for this upcoming fall. And we're just going to go to the property and pray over the property, pray over the teachers, the staff, the students, and then also our church community as we serve them this school year. Yeah. So super simple, but I think it's something very much needed yeah. right now. I will, and let me just go on and tell uh, all of you guys, tonight is a really good night to spend some time in prayer for schools, teachers, mm -hmm. kids, because tomorrow is a really big day. Uh, they go back to school, and obviously there's been hesitancy. Um, and that's the neat thing about prayer is, is you don't have to necessarily, like regardless of where you stand on it, you don't have to be like, well, I think this, I think this, who... Don't worry about it. Just pray. Pray mm -hmm. that God is present. Pray that God is honored. Pray that that, that people are safe, um, regardless of what's happening. So tonight, if, if, if that's something that uh, what he just talked about is at 5, so if you at your house just wanted to kind of lift up some prayers at, at 5 o'clock, um, yeah, that would be really, really, yeah. really neat. Simple thing to do if you can't make it tonight, pick a school. You, you guys probably know... A lot of the schools, since there are so many, just pick one maybe that's close to your house. Yeah. And, and since that's in your direct circle of your community, pray for that school. Um, but if you are planning on coming tonight, please text me or email me, and I will send you the Google form to make sure that we don't miss a school. And this is just for our middle school and high schoolers yeah. as well. Because uh, uh, if we add it in elementary yes, school. Yes, and in elementary and schools. Yes, so maybe maybe that's what we'll test the rest yeah. of y'all with. Pray over the elementary schools we'll cover. 
uh, the other one. But um, but reach out to me, and whatever school that your student or child goes to is the group that you would go to. Yeah. And so, but if, so if you're planning on coming, please let me know so I can let our group leaders know. Um, so they can know who to expect. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you where they're meeting and, and all sorts of stuff and all the other information. Yep, yep. We've got a great day of worship. A lot of y'all are coming in now. It looks like David was, was rolling in with the uh, a lot of box jokes. Um, those are always, always solid. Uh, I am seeing one question here. Gary, what's the address to your new office? All that's going to uh, be sent out. Um, all that's going to be sent out via emails um and the main reason is because i just don't know um, yeah. uh darlene good morning guys uh uh audio issues if, if anyone else is having audio issues yeah let us know we've not we're not getting any of that up here but um i think it's just my voice sometimes sometimes hey look technology's crazy if there's one thing we've learned in the last six months you know it's it's definitely rely on that so um Hopefully everybody else is doing good. We're coming into September already. My goodness, that's, alive! That's wild, man. It feels like yesterday was February. I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. We hope that you guys are staying safe. That things are going all right with y'all. We are going to go on and hand it over. Let you guys get your communion ready. Grab your cup of cup of coffee. Um, get ready to uh, uh, to to have a wonderful day of worship. We love you and we miss you. Oh, another pitch is send in, you know, the 8 to 10 second videos of you saying hello. You can send those to our email, Facebook Messenger. Sometimes you can just text it. Um, I think I, I will, I'll, I'll say today's video, there's only like six people that did it. And then last week, only like four. So it's kind of fun when everyone requests it. Everyone's like, we really want to see more Gateway people. And then nobody sends in videos. It's, and it's about like, to be just me sending in all <laughs> versions of me. It's going to be me doing impressions of everybody. Yes. we got to film Moses doing yes. it. So it's yes. funny. This it's one. Of, look, it's a unique situation. I get it. We all want to see it. But then it's like, hey, ministers, do something about it. Um, if I could drive to all of your houses and film you saying it, I would. But if I could drive to all of your houses... We wouldn't be doing this. We, we would, and it would be kind of a normal thing. So, um, no, send those in. Uh, we like seeing them. That they're 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 fun. Uh, it's good to see you guys. All right. Well, hey, we're going to get back to it. We're going to continue to pack, load up the office, and uh, we will see you guys soon. Talk to you later.
morning again, Gateway. It is so great to see y'all. You know what? There are there are really times that I wish you could see the behind the scenes moments, because uh, uh, sometimes the energy up here can be really weird, uh, in the sense of we're you know trying to produce something and get some content out, but just as soon as the camera goes off, there there might be some silliness, or some of us might be in slightly crazy moods or something along those lines. So maybe in our new office, we'll set up some other cameras so you can watch kind of the manicness that happens when we're not very controlled and uh, relaxed in front of you, uh, which is one of the reasons we've really enjoyed the virtual foyer. Thank you all for letting us do that. We think we do it for us just as much, maybe to kind of get some of those nerves out. Uh, we hope that so far you've had a wonderful day. We hope that you are going, you are eyeballing a good week. Um, but we also know that during a time like this, there are moments that aren't great. Uh, and um, we know that we have a lot of our members that are going through a lot of things um, uh, health-wise and stuff. Worship is, is for those moments too. You know, and that's, that's what's so beautiful about worship is, is it's not just about praise and the happiness, you know. And, and I think of so many ways of saying that, you know, don't... Uh, don't refuse to believe in the dark that which you believed in the light, you know, or as, as uh, you know, Mumford and Sons would say, you know, hold on to what you believe when the, when, when the dark comes. So that's the beauty of praise and worship. That's the beauty of prayer and singing is, is you might be sitting there saying, I don't feel like singing some of these songs. But worship transcends that to the state that even when you feel broken or lost or in the dark, that's what praise does is, is, is it's almost this declaration that, God, we know that you are there. We know that you are in charge. So I would welcome you, whether you're having the best day and the best week or whether you're having the worst day and the worst week, to find that place in worship where God ministers to you, where God offers healing, where God offers affirmation, where God offers peace to you. Uh, we're going to pray and we're going to continue on in our worship. God, we love you and we thank you so much that you transcend so much of the, the emotions we feel. God, and for those of us that are sitting in light right now, praise God. Thank you so much for that, Father. Continue to, to be that, that support for them, God. And for those that are sitting in the darkness, let them remember that which they believe in the light. Uh, let them know that you sit with us in the darkness. Father, as we know from the psalm even we read two weeks ago, Father, that, that though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that you are with us, you are there with us. So regardless, Father, of whether we are walking in, in a great day or in a painful day, we know you are present and let this worship be healing. All in your son's name we pray. Amen. Over all the earth you reign on high, every mountain stream. Sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again. Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again over every thought? My life reflect the beauty of my Lord Cause you mean more to me than any earthly thing So won't you reign in me again Lord reign in me Reign in your power over all my dreams In my darkest hour you are the Lord of all I am So won't you reign in me again Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams. In my darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again? Yes, Holy Father, reign in me again. A spirit, reign in me again. 
Swing full rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the Gateway family, Matt Bell and Dr. Steve and Pat Shang here. Hello. Hi there. We are doing well. Thank you for your prayers for Mother. And we are missing our family, and we are definitely ready for this to all be over so we can be back together again. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Hi, Gateway. Good morning, Gateway. Hello. Hey. We miss you. We miss you all. Hello, Gateway. Well, hello, Gateway. I haven't seen hardly any of you for a long time. I'll be so happy when we can all come back together again. I hope that you are staying safe and healthy. I love each and every one of you. This is Audra. Hey, Gateway. We miss you. We miss spending time with you, but we're enjoying being together with our family for a short vacation. Hope to see you soon. Love you. Hi there, Gateway. Stay calm and cool. Remember who's in control. Miss you. Take 250. Go. Hey, hey Gateway. Gateway. We love and miss you. Have a great time. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love yes. You. <laughs> Hello.
Hello again, Gateway. Uh, it's so great to see your faces in those videos. Like we said earlier, if you want to send us just a, a really fast video, you can do that with email, text, Facebook Messenger, really any way, um, just to say hello. Uh, we, get, we get such great feedback from people when they see that because it does, it, it connects us, it makes us feel uh, uh, involved. Another thing that we've been doing um, on Thursday evenings at 6 p.m., our elders are praying over us. There's sometimes it's specific, sometimes it's general, but they're spending some time in prayer over us. And uh, that's Thursday at six. It goes on Facebook Live, but it also goes immediately out on YouTube. It's emailed directly to you, so you can uh, spend some time in prayer on Thursday with our shepherds. Uh, uh, and you know, you really can't pray too much, right? Yeah, that when, when, especially in a time like this, but really at any times, we we pray as we're told in the Thessalonians. We pray without ceasing. Um, and if there's ever been a time where the without ceasing has been very abundantly clear, we're definitely in that time right now. Today I want to read from Romans chapter 5, and, and I'm just going to read the first uh, 11 verses um, and, and really just kind of let those sit. There's, a, there's such a beauty to this piece of scripture um, to me because it kind of encapsulates the gospel uh, the fact that there is separation, there is futility, there is brokenness, there is sin. There is a part of us that is that is fallen, that is separated from God. And so when we talk about Jesus and when we talk about God, you know, it's always keeping at the forefront that that relationship begins with this beautiful reconciliation. And it's reconciliation in the sense that a wrong has been done and then we bring it back. But now, you know, in, in our case... We're the ones that did the wrong. Humans are the ones that fell. Uh, and, and Paul lays this out in other places in, Rome, in Romans when he talks about how, you know, Adam this is this first sin. It created this fall. And so one of the things that I always want us to hang on to, and sometimes I think that maybe we, for, we can forget it when it comes to following Jesus, when it comes to following God, is it's a relationship that begins with us being in a place of, of wrongness and, and brokenness and us being welcomed into the beauty of what God purposed for us from the beginning, but is, is calling us into. And he did this through Jesus Christ because the sin that was separating us, that's, what, what, that's one of the things that Christ on the cross cleanses. Um, so I want to read this bit of scripture because it, to me it just kind of wraps everything into this kind of easily understandable way that says, hey, the beginning of our relationship is one born of love. This is, this is the essence of the gospel. It begins with love. It doesn't begin with our sin. It begins with God's love for us and wanting to bring us into relationship with him. Romans chapter 5, therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. Endurance develops strength of character. Character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how God dearly loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. What a beautiful place to sit in. What a beautiful place to realize that the beginning of our story begins with God's love. 
And through Jesus Christ, we are reconciled back into relationship. And I love how that scripture lays out. It's not that we're reconciled and then we just sit there. We're reconciled and we have a hope that doesn't disappoint. We have action. We have character to build. We have glory to share in. We have things to get out there and do because we are loved by God. What a beautiful call on our life. Let's continue on in our worship. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. There is beyond the azure blue, a God concealed from human sight. He tinted his skies with heavenly hue, and framed the worlds with his great might. There is a God.
to where we're going to be going from. We'll begin in Matthew chapter 7. Um, today, uh, just as we do every week, we remind you of the context of this passage in this, uh, in this uh, theme that we're working through, uh, the Perfection Series. And it is centered around the scripture, Matthew 5, 48, Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And how that verse is often taken out of context to mean that we have to literally be perfect and perform perfectly, but the scripture means be rounded, be whole, be complete as God is complete. In other words, you have been created in the image of God, so make sure that you are imaging God everywhere you go. You would practice the things God would want you to practice. You would live in the way God wants you to live. You would think in the way God wants you to think. So today's game of the day is the game Yahtzee. Remember that? Remember the game Yahtzee? It was a dice game. It came with a cup and five dice, and you would shake these dice and then roll it, and it was largely a game of chance. Now, there might be some of you that are looking at the picture on your screen, and you're thinking, that's not my Yahtzee. I remember an older version of Yahtzee, and that is this form of Yahtzee, which some of you may look at and think to yourself, well, that's not my game of Yahtzee. And then that would mean that this is your game of Yahtzee. It's the Yahtzee that you would probably find on eBay or in a Cracker Barrel, um, as the design is a little older. But that's the game that you remember. And you remember as you shake these dice, you can roll it, and um, it kind of, you go... Uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise around, and everybody takes a turn rolling the dice, and they roll it, and they they can pull some dice out and put them back in in hopes that they can roll a higher number. And basically, it's a game of addition. You take a chance to roll the higher score, and the person who tallies up the most points, so the, the, the way those dice uh, rolls add up to, wins. And so... If you win and you get the number that you're wanting, then you yell, Yahtzee! So today, we're going to talk about what it means to end up with a spiritual Yahtzee. And it comes from Matthew 7, 13 through 27. And I read, Jesus says, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the uh, gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. 
and many enter through it. So you've got this huge wide road, this huge wide gate, and this massive amount of people. And then he shifts. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. So broad, wide, mass amounts of people to narrow, small, and few. I remember growing up with this scripture being held over me, and it was done so in a way to say only a few people are going to make it. In the context of the passage was that there is a broad way to live which is dangerous, and there's a salvational road that is meant to live into which is rare. But not only rare, difficult. Matter of fact, I want to say that many of us have read this passage and we think about the fact that I have to live perfect based on the Matthew 5.48 verse. And if I don't live perfectly, if I don't hold the right doctrines, if I don't interpret the Bible correctly, if I don't understand Greek and Hebrew, if I don't do all these things right, then I'm going to get it wrong and I'm going to walk through the broad, wide road and gate. And I'm going to be in that group. But I don't want to be in that group. I want to be in the small and the narrow road. I want to be the one that, that, that is part of the few. Well, let me calm you down a bit. Because if you're living that way, then you're living your spirituality and your faith through the game of Yahtzee. The game of chance. I hope, beyond hope, that I get everything right. Because I want to get to heaven. Let's continue reading, though. Contextually, Jesus continues. He says, watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. There were two hurricanes in the gulf. Okay, I threw that part in. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. There's this statement Jesus runs through. He actually doesn't run through it. It's the second time he's mentioned it. But he's mentioning it, mentioning it, and we'll get back to that in a moment. And it is this idea of the will of God. The will of God. He says, we need to do the will of God. So what is the will of God? Well, a lot of people have decided that they were going to read the Bible and compartmentalize the will of God. And there are five references to the will of God. I'll go through them really quickly. The first is this, it's 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, and 8, 3 through 8, and it talks about being sexually pure. That is the will of God. Number two, Ephesians 5, 17 through 19, be filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, it is the will of God that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. So be sexually pure, be filled with the Holy Spirit. The third one, 1 Peter 4, 19, understanding believers will suffer. The will of God is that you as a believer understand that you are going to suffer. That's the will of God. 
Fourth, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Always give thanks. It's the will of God that you live thankfully. Always giving thanks. And finally, 1 Peter 2.13-15 says, The will of God is by submitting to ruling authorities. Submitting to ruling authorities. The authorities that rule over you. Your government, your your um, your structures, your hierarchical structures that are put in place to govern over people. Submit to those authorities. And, and it's interesting in that passage it says, for the Lord's sake, do this. For the church's sake, do this. But here's the deal. People have wasted the majority of their life trying to figure out what the will of God is. Wasted? What do you mean wasted? Isn't the will of God important? Would Jesus not have told us to live by the will of God if he didn't deem it as important? That's not what I'm talking about. The will of God is much more simple than we've made it. Matter of fact, I could even say that based upon the mention of the will of God in these other five texts, if I wanted to compartmentalize it, I would say that you live this way and that's the will of God. Be sexually pure, be filled with the Holy Spirit, understand that you will suffer, always give thanks, and submit to ruling authorities. But here's the deal. Compartmentalizing scripture that way is dangerous because the will of God is mentioned in a broader context, not to say that that was the exhaustive list of what it meant to live in the will of God. The will of God is much broader than that. Because this is a passage that kind of talks about salvation. It, it is Jesus saying there is a broad way and everybody will go this way, but there is a narrow way that's better. But we don't often view that as better. Right? We view that as more legalistic, more dangerous. So there's a conflicting message when it talks about having this life and living it to the full, but this narrow gate that I can barely squeeze through. I don't know if you've ever been to Ruby Falls, but if you've ever been to Ruby Falls, there is one crack or chasm in the rock when you're going through it that has always been called Fat Man's Pass. And it's an irony because if you are overweight, you can't fit through it. Now, they've become a little bit more politically correct, and they've changed the name over the years, but that, when I was a kid, was what we went through. Luckily for me, um, I was about 120 pounds until the age of 33, and so it was always easy for me to walk through it, barely even having to bend to miss rocks. But that's the idea of the passage to lead to heaven that I always had growing up. It's this very narrow way. But that's not what the scripture implies. The scripture implies that it's narrow because living God's way takes a lot of choice. It takes a lot of free will decision that we're going to live for Jesus and not live as the world would have us live. So you might ask the question then, who then can be saved? I mean, if it's for only a few, which is around five people, how many in the grand scheme of things are going to be allowed in? And when Jesus uses that fateful terminology, Lord, Lord, to those people that cry out to him, Lord, Lord, that I, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of iniquity or you evildoers, is that going to include me? Because I certainly don't want it to. I want to get everything right. It's not about getting everything right. It's about putting everything that is wrong right. In other words, living in such a way that I perform the will of God in my life. So where can I get the context for that? Well, it's just a few verses earlier. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 6, well, that, yeah, that's a very famous passage. It talks about prayer. In the first two passages, though, first two scriptures, in that prayer, I want us to read it contextually. Jesus says this. This, then, is how you should pray. Listen to the first lines about what is expected of us when we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, God, your name is so powerful and sacred. Then watch. Your kingdom come... 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What is that? Well, look at this definition. The will of God is everything that God desires to happen on earth as it is in heaven. Did you catch it? The will of God is everything that God desires to happen on earth as it is in heaven. We are, 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 we, we are told that if we want to perform the will of God in our life, then the way we should do it is by replicating the same mentality in the way we should pray. This prayer is more than just a model prayer. It sums up the importance of the way we should live. I live reverently to God's sacred name. In other words, it means something to me. And what I want to do more than anything else on this earth is I want God's heavenly things the way they are to be lived out on earth as they are in heaven. So what is God's will? It is putting wrong things right. It is trying to live in such a way that we don't do what the world desires, but we do what God desires. It is using the words of Paul later that says, My flesh desires the things flesh desires, but I want my spirit to desire the things the spirit desires. In other words, we sometimes live our lives in such a way where we feel like we have to unravel this Bible to know which commands I need to do and so that I can avoid the, the commands that are wrong. That's not living in a system of, of grace. But living as a Christian is more of a mentality. It's more of saying, I want the things God desires for others. That's why I live my life as for, for others as others-centered. Not me, all of us. We should live others-centered. We should live with compassion. We should live with empathy. But what gets in the way of that? Every bit of self. Isn't it amazing that in the words of Jesus, he says, don't store for yourselves treasures on this earth that will be corrupted. But we live our entire lives bent on storing up for ourselves treasures on this earth. Let me ask you, what matters more to you? Well, it's where you put your money. It's where you put your eyes. It's where you put your desires. And when those things begin to drive you, you have just discovered where the will of God might not be in your life. That's a hard message. I mean, the truth is, is I want to do the will of God, but how can I do that if I am polluted by what the world is giving me? And the fact that I put most of that into motion. Don't be so caught up in the craziness of the world that you neglect to do heavenly things in an earthly atmosphere. That's your calling for today. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your will. Your will means simply your desires, your doing. God, help us to do the things on this earth that you desire. Help us to to throw caution to the wind in the way we live, not because we are so caught up for building something for ourselves, but that we are more caught up in building something for you so that you get the glory and, and, and you get the recognition you deserve. Help us to release all of the things that we store up for ourselves here that corrupt our hearts and turn our eyes away from you. It's in Christ that we pray. Amen. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you, glorify thy name in all the earth. Glory
your communion elements ready. Um, I heard of, uh, from a member this week that uh, one of the things they've been doing to kind of center and focus themselves during communion time is that they're reading through the Sermon on the Mount, the very thing that we're preaching through right now. And uh, it helps them in between um, the bread and the fruit of the vine to kind of center their focus around Jesus and his words. I thought, what a beautiful thing to do uh, during that time. So Whichever way that you are communing with your family or by yourself, um, the goal is to remember Jesus. And so hopefully uh, you have your communion elements. We'll go ahead and pray for those now and then uh, let you take those uh, during the song. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your son Jesus. And we pray that you will uh, be with all of those today around the world who are communing together around a table that commemorates the memory of your son, Jesus. Thank you so much for uh, the bread that represents his flesh and the fruit of the vine that represents his blood. Help us take it in a manner pleasing to you, in Christ's name, amen. I just want to be where you Where you are in your dwelling. 
All right, so you saw the offering slide. This is your chance to participate in the worship by giving back from what the Lord has given us. Um, and so I do want to take this time, though, to uh, say that before you participate in that, and we'll put the slide back up in a minute for you to uh, be reminded on how to give, um, to keep in mind that to, at the end of today's services, following Terry Jenton's closing prayer, um, there are three special announcements that uh, I will be making. So make sure you don't log off as soon as uh, we're done with communion. So you'll miss that. So uh, stay tuned to the very end. So let's pray for the communion and uh, you take part. I mean, not communion, the offering and you take part in that. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for giving us an opportunity today to give back from what you've given us. God, we realize that we are extremely blessed. Even those of us in the middle of this pandemic, um, are, are extremely blessed by the fact that we still have our jobs. Father, we um, think about those who are less fortunate today and pray that you will allow them to, to be raised up into light so that you and your church body can help them uh, in this time of darkness that they're in right now. God, please continue to uh, watch over us. And uh, God, I pray that you will honor these gifts that are being given from a full heart today to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Gateway. We have so many things to be praying about and so many things to remember. Let us begin and pray. May God watch over us and protect us. May he encourage us each day to remember to put the will of God in our lives. As we remember all the things that are going on, let us remember the sick. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of those that are sick, either at home or in the hospital. Lord, we ask you to watch over those that are grieving for the loss of someone. We've had several this week. Lord, we thank you for jobs, but there are those that have lost jobs. Lord, help them and encourage them during this time as they struggle and with the needs that they have. Bless our teachers, our students, and staff while with the start of the school this week. Bless those that are caring for the sick with the pandemic and Lord and the pandemic soon. Lord, we thank you for the construction team and those that are building our new church. 
We thank you for the church staff and the leadership as we move each day, each week to be, to reach out to those. Lord, we thank you for those that are in harm's way. We have two hurricanes coming into the Gulf area and there's many fires in California. Lord, we ask you for our country, for our nation as it grows, it struggles, bless the leadership that they may put you first to watch over people. And Lord, we ask you for each of the Gateway family and for the Christians throughout the world that are watching this morning and putting you first to be safe and healthy. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement you have for us. May we put you first in our lives in all that we say and all that we do. And remember, Jesus is first and the answer to our lives. Amen. Well, I mentioned that we had three special announcements. I will jump to um, first one is a letter of thanks from Jennifer Koppel. Uh, Jennifer is the daughter of Jean Gerdner, and uh, she writes, um, We would like to thank all of you for your thoughts, prayers, and cards you sent after our mother, Jean Gerdner, passed away. We wish we could have had a normal funeral service to see you all in person. Our mother had so many wonderful friends there, and it was so nice to know just how much she was loved. Our special thanks to Jeremy, Seth, and Brenda for all of their kind words about our loving mother. Also, everything Brenda and Mike did for mother before she left us, and for me and Alan after. We also want to thank Sandra for the delicious pound cake she made for us, and Elaine for what she did behind the scenes. Gateway was such an important part of mother's life, and she loved you all so much. Much love, um, Jennifer and Alan. And we miss your mom, Jennifer, if you're tuned in. Um, what a great gift she was um, and what a legacy she leaves behind. Also, uh, from LeSharon Wiley, she says, Thank you so much for all the prayers, cards, phone calls, texts, and other expressions of sympathy you extended to me in the loss of my brother. Your thoughtfulness and expressions of love help me more than you can imagine. I am so thankful to be part of, a such, of such loving church family. And uh, our heart continues to go out to you, Lou Sharon and Jennifer, uh, as you guys uh, grieve and mourn through uh, your individual losses. And uh, we want you to know that if there's anything we can do, we want to help you. Probably my favorite line in that whole thing is the things that were done behind the scenes. Uh, that should be the way the church is remembered. And not so much that uh, in Jesus' word that we let our, uh, our left hand know what our right hand is doing or vice versa but that we are doing things behind the scenes to bring this heavenly reality down to earth. So um, this, el this uh, was pinned by our elders to the congregation, and it's announced an announcement concerning a meeting in person again. And so here, here it goes. Well, Gateway family, as we continue to travel this new season together, it is very important that we individually and as a church body stay flexible and continuously evaluate the information and realities of our location. We need to stay in prayer that we discern the wisdom of the Spirit. The leadership has been meeting and planning on the church to meet together as soon as it is safe, and we know it is frustrating not to do that. We have decided to delay a return to worship at Booker T. Washington High School until at least September 20th, 2020. 2020, well that's weird. Since Gateway does, doesn't have our own place to worship, we have to depend on the availability of the school. The students are heading back to school next week, so it, was felt, wise, it felt wise to continue with our virtual worship for the first three or four weeks to see how reopening of school affects the spread of COVID-19. We do not want to start back and then have to stop again, if at all possible. The elders understand the desire for all of us to be together again. The time is drawing near for that to happen, and we can all continue to pray for a cure 
and effective vaccine that hopefully will be found soon. We love you all and continue to encourage you to be Jesus to those around you during this season. So, you heard it here officially today. Our goal is to try to begin meeting back together September 20th, next month of this year. So, as we talk through that and as we watch those numbers, I think there's a lot of wisdom that the elders have put forth to see how uh, this going back to school uh, continues either to elevate the numbers or lower the numbers. But our goal is to meet back together in person as soon as we possibly can. That does it for today's worship. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful week.